This is the making of the Mitsubishi IME, the world's first fully electric mass-produced car. They had no precedent, they had no rules to follow. A high-stakes gamble that could make or break an automotive legend. It is a significant risk. From automotive design to exhaustive testing and finally to the high-tech line where it comes together, the Mitsubishi i Neve is a technological triumph after years of hit and miss results. The first time we made an electric vehicle, the car burned down. And billions of dollars of investment. This innovation will be laid bare and tested with the creation of a race car, set to explode the perception of electric cars once and for all. The journey isn't without its obstacles and triumphs. Sit back and buckle up while we take you for a spin through the design, technology, and production of the iMeve, one of the most fuel-efficient cars on the planet. A car that almost didn't get made at all. A 100% electric car. It's a dream engineers have been fine-tuning for over a century. Yeah, early versions had promise. They'd be great for the environment, but they just weren't practical. Too heavy, too expensive, and too slow. In short, not quite ready to take over the road. That is, until now. The IME from Mitsubishi is aiming to change all that. Mitsubishi's been a leader in the electric vehicle technology for over 40 years. The culmination of that pioneering manifests itself in the IME. IME stands for I, as in the I car, MEV, Mitsubishi Innovative Electric Vehicle. This is the story about the birth of the world's first mass-produced electric car. Get ready to have your assumptions blown away. It may be the most energy-efficient car on the planet, but this is no golf cart. Advanced technologies like a powerful single-gear transmission and a braking scheme that actually recharges the battery are winning over the skeptics. Yeah, it did surprise me. Um, when you look at the spec sheet, you expect it to be more sluggish with the low horsepower and moderate weight, but it never leaves you wanting more. The iMeve's ultra-low center of gravity and compact battery pack give it agile handling, and its silent, responsive acceleration has surprised even experienced drivers. When I heard the word electric cars, I used to think of things like golf carts. Dakar Rally two-time champion Hiroshi Masuoka is working to take EV technology to the next level. With a team of engineers, he's developing a performance prototype of the iMeve. The huge acceleration power that electric cars have is something you won't find in a normal engine car. When I first drove the iMeve, I was surprised with its high-quality finish. I honestly thought, if this is what an electric car is, then I want one too. Mitsubishi is betting the bank that the electric car's time has come. Everything that was designed and engineered and built for the iMeV is cutting edge technology. From the energy density of the lithium ion battery to the efficiency of the electric motor to the packaging of the vehicle being very aerodynamic, it all culminates into the most efficient vehicle that Mitsubishi Motors Corporation has ever been able to produce. The power plant is at the center of this innovative technology. It has no traditional gas engine. Instead, the iMeve is powered by a magnetic synchronous electric motor fed by an 88-cell lithium-ion battery pack. The iMeve uh, uses a lithium-ion battery that is more compact and more powerful than what we've seen in hybrid vehicles. It has a range of up to 155 kilometers on a single charge. That's about three times more than the average daily North American commute. iMeve is built with city drivers in mind, but it holds up on the highway too, with a top speed of nearly 130 kilometers or 80 miles an hour. And here's the kicker, never visit the gas station again. Dollar savings vary, but it will always be far cheaper than gas. And with way less moving parts than a gasoline car, the EV system requires only one quick maintenance visit a year. Well, the thing doesn't need much, okay? It's, it's electric. I mean, I've got some brakes and some tires and a battery. Mitsubishi is the first major car maker to skip past the hybrid and go straight to all electric. When we decided to do an electric car, other car companies had already established very impressive hybrid technologies. We did not believe we could catch up from behind if we went with the same type of car. 
Without a precedent, though, the company's leap straight to EVs meant actually inventing the technology. They had no precedent, they had no rules to follow. Everything was new to us. In fact, the whole program was constantly challenged. It very nearly got cancelled as the cost of developing EV technology for the mass market piled up and a return on investment remained elusive. When I first began work on the electric car in 1994, I couldn't imagine that we would get to the point of mass production. Billions of dollars worth of development have been put into this car, money Mitsubishi has gambled with for the future. An electric car is the rejection of the technology of the past. But can EV technology meet the wants and needs of today's consumers? At the Green Living Show in Toronto, the interest in the environment is obvious. Mitsubishi is here to address what it calls electrophobia, the fear of investing in an EV. They're here to educate. Consumers are looking at electric vehicles now because there are concerns about pollution. Um, there are concerns about the cost of gasoline going up. So if you want a car to drive around the city, it's ideal. Today's at the uh, Green Living Show is the first time I've had a chance to drive the North American version of the IMEV. This one has more power, it's more comfortable, and more space inside. It's a lot of fun to drive. They're still a second car, and they're basically uh, an urban car. Well, I'm sold on it. I'm not worried about any secondary pollution. I'm just knocked out by the fact there is no tailpipe, so there's nothing coming out of the tailpipe. Mitsubishi's challenge was to develop groundbreaking technology for an affordable zero emissions car. It's difficult to say exactly how much mass production development cost, but the initial development alone cost billions of yen. The first time we made an electric vehicle, the car burned down. At the time, I thought for a moment that maybe this was impossible. The first major breakthrough was the battery. Lead was gone, replaced in 1999 by new lithium-ion technology. That development alone changed everything. Electric cars finally started to look like they could become a reality. Of course, they would still need to design a car that could incorporate the new battery. Mitsubishi wanted something that could go more than 100 kilometers on a single charge. The problem, the farther you want to go, the bigger the battery needs to be. And that impacts size, weight, and cost of the vehicle. Eventually, they settled on a 16 kilowatt hour battery that can travel up to 155 kilometers on a single charge. Next, they needed to package the EV components into a vehicle big enough to be functional, but small enough to be light and fuel efficient. To keep costs down, they looked within their existing fleet for answers. One possible choice was the innovative iCar, Mitsubishi's gas-powered Japanese K-Class vehicle. The base car, the gasoline car platform was an extremely good fit for the electric car. The original iCar look came from the pencil of Ichiro Otani, who won an internal design competition. More than 100 sketches followed with the hopes of turning this little car into something truly unique. The eye's fun bubble shape had made an emotional connection with younger buyers, and the company hoped to repeat history with the iMeve. Since this was a new car, the issue was to bring out innovation. But if we focused only on this, it would only be high-tech and off-putting. We added a sense of affinity so it could be both new and friendly. Designers then had to modify the Japanese iMeve for the North American market. First, in order to improve inside space, we widen everything. The bumper is extended to meet North American standards, but additionally, to bring out a wide feeling. Also, because of the extension, we can take advantage of the downforce in order to make high-speed travel more stable. Multiple tests led to refinements in the body shape. The new shape is tested in a state-of-the-art wind tunnel to check the car's aerodynamics. First difference is the door mirror. We're working on form optimization of the door mirror, so air can pass freely and soundlessly in the space between the mirror and the A-pillar. Engineers also tested for aeroacoustics. Hurricane force winds pound the vehicle to ensure wind noise in this otherwise silent car doesn't become a distraction. Then it became all about space. 
how removing catalytic converters, fuel tanks, and engines might or might not make room for electric components. It all started to look like a workable plan. The electric motor and inverter were mounted in the rear where the gas engine was and the battery was installed under the floor where the gas tank used to be. It all left enough room for four people and some rear cargo space. Because it was so quiet, Mitsubishi added an acoustic vehicle alert system, or pedestrian alarm, designed so it can be heard on the street at low speeds, but wouldn't ruin the ride for the driver. People are used to hearing a car approaching, but in the case of the 100% electric iMeve, that is not the case. This car is very silent and very smooth as it approaches. I think the silence is just great. And I'm a guy that loves roaring engines. I own a Porsche. But there's something to be said for just driving along with so little impact on the world around you. Several different drive modes were created, letting the driver choose either more power or a more energy efficient ride to extend their range. Drive means maximum power and fun, Echo conserves the most battery power, and B is maximum power with enhanced regenerative braking. Those regenerative brakes turn the blight of city driving, the curse stop and start, into electricity. When the driver applies pressure to the brake pedal, the kinetic energy in the brakes transfers that energy back into the drive battery, therefore allowing extended driving distances for the vehicle. All this managed by state-of-the-art computer systems. In the heart of the American Midwest, a progressive community has welcomed EV technology with open arms. Normal Illinois is anything but normal. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom. And I'm Dr. Kathy. And this is our iCar, our electric car. It's known as EV Town and has one of the highest concentrations of electric vehicles in North America and the most friendly to its EV loving citizens. I was one of those muscle car boys when I was a teenager. So I, you know, I know my way around cars. You know, it's a real car. That's what people don't understand about it. A few years back, Normal's mayor Chris Coos had a revelation. He heard about the iMeve and decided to spearhead an initiative that would help bring these cars to his town streets en masse. Well, our plan for the community is, again, to get 1,000 vehicles on the road, to, to show the community here and the nation that is viable and real. Mayor Coos led the charge, putting the car to work. The city has eight uh, electric vehicles that we use. We have cars in parking enforcement, we have cars in inspection, we have cars in fire inspections. As I was surprised at how roomy it was, and you get one or two big guys like me in there, and you know you take up a lot of room, but it, it had room in it. Citizens of Normal accept the EV's limitations and celebrate its advantages. We chose to get an electric car because we felt it was the most efficient use of the energy resources. And it's fun to drive. <laughs> that was the other thing, the fun factor. Well, the best thing I like is not having to go to gas stations and pay $4 a gallon for gas. I didn't buy the car because I'm trying to save the environment. I bought the car because it makes economical sense. You know, for about a buck 75, you can charge your car and roll 70 miles. That's a pretty good deal. It is the main disadvantage is what's called range anxiety, because you're always thinking you're going to run out of charge, because you only have between 60 and 80 miles. Gas stations may be a thing of the past, but charging stations are still needed for any lengthy road trip. It's easy to recharge at home, but what if you can't? We realize that infrastructure is part of the uh, rollout of a, of a vital uh, electric vehicle community. Or having those charging stations is pretty critical. We learned that lesson from, from the Japanese in Tokyo, that when they rolled out the car there, as they built up charging infrastructure within in the city of Tokyo, people were more readily adopting the, the vehicle. By the end of this year, Normal plans to have installed more than 50 charging stations. This is the next form of transportation for people uh, all across the world. In Okazaki, Japan, the new electric car is put to the test. Vibration, suspension, and track testing are pretty standard stuff these days, but with a high voltage battery pack on board, they take on special significance. There are many things, but I think the most important is safety and reliability. In particular, it uses high voltage, so we put a lot of thought into preventing possible disasters. 
like fire, electrocution, and short-circuiting. All modern cars are put through crash tests. It's a critical part of evaluating safety overall. But for the IMEV, it's especially important. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It's very important seeing it protecting the battery. Also, the high voltage socket. Crash testing determines whether the unique components on an electric car, like a flammable battery, for instance, are protected well enough to withstand crashes on all sides and meet the tough safety requirements of North America. In the pole impact test, we have to make sure we don't just protect the people, but also the battery and cables. Because of its wider body and the extension of the front and rear bumpers, this little electric car meets and exceeds safety standards. But what about the potentially hazardous emissions from the battery itself and those sensitive onboard computers? Here, in this cavernous high-tech facility lined with metal and ferrite tile baffles, tests are conducted to gauge the effect of electromagnetic or radio waves on the car and from the car. EMC testing, EMC testing is conducted mainly with regard to electric current. With the car on a dynamo, a robot is loaded to drive it at a steady speed. The chamber is then sealed to contain the emissions, and the car is blasted with controlled radio waves. The brain of the IMEV, central to its operation, is monitored to make sure it isn't affected by outside influences. Then, the process is reversed, and the emissions from the car and battery are tested to make sure there's no danger to outside electronics, like heart pacemakers. The IMEV also has to be up to the harsh extremes of the North American climate. Heat is the first villain it has to face. 760 bulbs in the hot chamber cook the car with a blazing 40 degrees Celsius, making sure the battery is safe and the resin parts hold up. Then the car is frozen to minus 20 degrees Celsius overnight. With the frost settled into every component, they test the ignition and operation of the car from lights and windows to the heating and defrost functions. But it's the frigid temperatures of the Canadian subarctic where the cars face their final cold test. Thompson Manitoba is used by most of the major automakers to challenge their vehicles in real world conditions. First, we learned that in the low temperature test, when the heater was turned on, it used lots of electricity. So we made improvements. We added a control to heat the battery before charging. Based on all that testing in cold weather, they also added a remote function, which has since become standard in all IMEVs. While the car is charging, you can use it to turn on the heat, air conditioning, or defrost, taking the energy directly from the grid instead of the car's battery. The timer can be set so the IMEV will begin to charge at the lowest peak hours, the most cost-effective way to do it. Back at the test track in Okazaki, Japan, the IMEV is pressed to perform. A sophisticated multi-surface track known here as the feeling track perfectly simulates dozens of real-world road surfaces. Here, drivers are listening for road noise in this quiet ride. There is no combustion engine noise to drown out the sound of the road or vibrations in the car. Pushing things to the ultimate limit, a robot takes over. This high-tech driver never gets tired and is key to testing the durability of the battery housing, the suspension, and the car's overall endurance. On this surface, 25 times rougher than any regular road, the car is run for hundreds of hours, simulating hundreds of thousands of kilometers of vibration and wear and tear. We exposed the car to damage while running tests. In addition to the body, we also look at the sealing and durability of the battery package. Water and electricity are usually not the best of friends, so the IMEV is run through multiple shallow water tests. Just two inches of water mixed with steady acceleration creates a solid wave that tests the protection of the battery. The 230 kilogram battery pack tucked under the floor allows the vehicle to take turns like a sports car. Here, and on the slalom, that edge is clear. It's what they're counting on when this technology is placed in the hands of rally driving legend Hiroshi Masuoka, who's working with engineers to create a performance prototype called the IMEV Evolution. 
This electric race car will be premiered at the Pikes Peak Hill Climb in Colorado. Mitsubishi Motors has two motives in creating the evolution. One is the popularization of electric cars. Our second motive is development. By pushing the car to its limits and analyzing the data, information, and know-how we gain from this, we would like to use this experience to further our next car development. Racing is often used by manufacturers to gauge new technology. That's why stock parts from the IME factory floor are used in this race prototype. Motorsports is a great place to improve the technology. With the IMEV Evolution, we wanted to push the limits to see how fast we can go, but we're using a lot of the same components from the stock vehicle in the IMEV Evolution to compare the difference of, you know, obviously being a stock car versus, you know, what we can do with when we push the limits. The chassis is a specially designed tube frame and the cowl is carbon fiber. It will have the wheels and styling of a race car, but essentially use the technology and major components of the stock iMeve. All this packaged for competition. The interesting part is that electric vehicle actually uses a lot less components than regular gas cars. So even if we were to have crash or something like that, we could just replace the unit really quickly. If we do not endeavor to face new challenges, we will have no innovation, and there will be no chance to lead the competition. But that gamble won't pay off unless the iMeve is up to real-world use, and that's where fleet testing comes in. The prototype was introduced as the fleet vehicle to seven utility companies in Japan, then to organizations like the Hong Kong Police, the Bloomington, Illinois Parking Authority, and Hydro-Quebec. It was a great learning opportunity to perfect the IME before going into production. We have conducted fleet testing for more than 500,000 kilometers. Today, Boucherville, Quebec, just outside of Montreal, is the center of EV testing in Canada. Power giant Hydro-Quebec signed on to test these vehicles in real-world conditions. Hydro-Quebec is a leader in electric transportation. We've been testing electric vehicles for years. So the objective of the pilot project is to study the participants' charging behavior in real-life conditions. So we want to test their overall driving experience in all conditions, including winter conditions. Staff of select test companies like Mia Pascal Marchand are asked to drive the cars and rate the experience in everything from affordability to practicality to enjoyment. I prefer the iMeve to my gas car because I think the drive is easier. It's more smooth uh, with the no vibration. Winter driving was one of my fears before I started the project, but it went well, uh, very well in the snow and uh, with the winds and stuff, so it's, uh, it's a nice drive. Well, the only disadvantage that I see is that I cannot take it to go to Quebec City, for example. The issue of extended range is about to change. Just like in normal Illinois, Quebec as a province is working to turn the vision of an electric highway into a reality. Right now we have 120 charging stations throughout uh, the greater Montreal and Quebec City region and uh, we are working on expanding the network. We have abundant, clean, renewable hydropower. Our government, uh, they are offering incentives for vehicles and charging stations. Uh, electricity here is about nine times cheaper than um, gas. Mitsubishi hopes those incentives, along with the gas savings, will turn the iMeve into a winner in the consumer market. The new iMeve has met and surpassed testing requirements for North America, so it's time to fire up production. But this all-electric car took some special handling on the line. Electricity training became mandatory for all production staff, especially workers in the newly constructed battery assembly area. Workers here wear rubber-soled shoes and go through anti-static procedures to make sure they don't bring electricity into the workspace. Static electricity can harm the batteries at this stage and touching the wrong parts of them simultaneously.